What's good, people? CJ Williams for Culturalist Theory. Look, guys, sports and music have always had crazy overlaps, with perhaps none being as overt as the XXL freshman classes and sports drafts. Today, we'll be ranking every freshman class to date from worst to first. The criteria for the ranking will largely be based on skill and talent, with a little bit of accomplishments and a little bit less of staying power sprinkled in. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so you're not missing a list. Let's get to it. Number 16. 2023. We know the war between youngins and old heads is a tale as old as time. With XXL serving as the gatekeepers between emerging talent and superstardom, the 2023 class makes the generational gap more apparent than ever. The magazine usually sprinkles in an MC or two, followed by 8 to 10 future pop stars in training, but this year's crop was pretty lacking in both. Now, we can't ever say anything bad about my girl Glow, and I'd be lying if I said Finesse Two Times, Sleazy World Go, and DC The Don didn't show up prepared. But Glow didn't even participate in a freestyle or cipher, while the other three were solid, but didn't do enough to offset choices like Too Rare, Tia Corinne, and Real Boston Richie. Now throwing Tia under the bus doesn't even feel right, cause we had Freaky T on repeat since it dropped, but she deadass gave us a 17 second freestyle and thought we wouldn't notice? Obviously they're the most recent addition to the hip-hop tradition, so there's plenty of time and opportunity for us to be wrong. But whether it's waning influence from the company itself, a shift in the landscape of rap, or a disconnect between the audience and critical community at large, this class announcement didn't have any motion. None of the freestyles even cracked a million views. Number 15, 2021. I think we can all acknowledge 2021 was a strange year. Everyone was still figuring out life following the pandemic, and TikTok had a chokehold on label attention. But this feels like a case of what came first, the chick or the egg. Artists like DDG and Ruby Rose do have substantial followings, but most of the demand for their music is generated from fans of their social media presence. Still, XXL did hit on a couple of gems. Blast hasn't missed yet. Distinct style and consistency. We love to hear it. Koi's always been versatile. When she's being herself, she could cruise control in any lane. But Flo Millie was this class's saving grace, if you ask us, though. Tamiya Carter feels like the Anthony Edwards of the rap game. She's confident, talented enough to compete on any stage, and she's clearly studied the greats. Check out her remixes of Throw Some D's and A Millie while you're at it. It's hard for any class to keep itself afloat when an artist like Pooh Shiesty gets incarcerated as soon as they start making waves, but you play who's in front of you. Number 14. 2022. Okay, so we're starting to see a pattern here. 22's class sports one of our favorite dynamic duos with Dochi and Babyface Ray, but that supporting cast gets a little shaky. Nardo certainly has shown flashes of potential both in his demeanor and delivery. Just wish we could get more consistency from the Wick Man. We're checking for the new Casey drops too, but artists like Sofago, Babytron, and Saucy Santana aren't taking up too much storage in our streaming apps. Not mad at it, understanding your audience and connecting with them is a talent in itself. This class just feels limited in its ability to sustain success once trends reset. We will give XXL some props though. Before doing our research for this ranking, Cochise wasn't even on our radar. Excited to see where bro takes the sound, we hear some Cardi and Uzi in his music, but not in a derivative way. More like a nostalgic past the torch kind of way. Number 13, 2018. 2018 is a particularly difficult year to rank. On the one hand, an artist like J.I.D. is a generational talent. He'd be a prophetic pick in any draft class he graced. But then you have picks like Blackboy JB, YB in Namir and Wi-Fi's funeral that feel very short-sighted. I mean, selecting Smoke Perp and Lil Pump in the same class alone shows you how difficult it is to predict an artist's trajectory. Truthfully, we think the problem has evolved beyond lyricism and skill, with this class being the precursor to the rift between millennials and Gen Z. Streaming hit a different stratosphere when artists like Pump, 6 ix 9 and Namir could achieve seemingly overnight success with their first couple of ventures on SoundCloud. Never forget that artists are just hustlers in the booth, with labels throwing life-changing money at anyone who sparked immediate engagement, artists met demand with supply and development and the cultivation of fan bases suffered for it. You could blame it on the death of the mixtape, the rise of apps like TikTok, or unbelievable blind spots in the selection process. Gunna, Little Baby, Moneybag Yo, and T Grizzly all sent in pitches for this class. Revisionism aside, this class marks a shift in consumer streaming habits and you can't tell us otherwise. Number 12, 2012. This list could go one of two ways. You could A, see the glass half full and applaud the selections of Future and to a lesser extent French Montana, both of whom have put together solid careers lasting more than a decade. Or you can look at picks like Hobson, Iggy Azalea, Machine Gun Kelly, and Kid Ink and say, Brother, uh, 
What's that? Now, 2012 does sport the first female MC to grace the freshman cover class, for whatever that's worth. If a class like 2016 is remembered for its staying power and aging gracefully, 2012 has to be the polar opposite. Danny Brown will always be locked in with his following, and we're not mad at picks like Macklemore and Roscoe Dash. Aside from Don Tripp, everyone representing 2012 had their own momentum and made sense at the time. But knowing less than a third of these artists crossed the five year mark of relevancy makes it next to impossible to move this class up any higher. Now, as of recent, Don Tripp has been making waves, dropping a project each month for the last year and a half. Make sure you check those out because he's got some sleepers in there. Not only was this one of the weakest years in freshmen since the inaugural class of 09, 2012 was sandwiched in between two monster outings. More on that in a second. Number 11. 2015. If rap were a Venn diagram, 2012 and 2015 would share much more overlap than divergence. The latter prevailing more so because of the heights its stars reached and the sound that was available to them at the time. Stylistically, neither era has come out looking strong 10 years later, the average lifespan of a 2015 member probably netting you an extra year or two. Vince is still rolling out high quality projects almost 10 years later, but don't sleep on consistent hitters like K-Camp and Tink. Dej was also immeasurably impactful as we think a lot of artists are going to start pointing to her as an influence, talent like Coyle Ray, Doja Cat, and Dochi all going through a door that she opened. We don't need to get into Fetty's fall off, Big Homie had one of the most you had to be there runs we've ever seen. Introducing the freshman pitches was probably the best and worst thing the company could have done. We'll never make the mistake of thinking just because you have millions invested in the industry that you have a crystal ball. But knowing they missed out on acts like Tory Lanez, Bobby Shmurda, Dreezy, and Boldy James just feels like information we shouldn't be privy to. Number 10, 2007. Let's take it back to the beginning. The inaugural class did what a lot of pioneering efforts have the opportunity or responsibility, depending on how the dice roll, of upholding. That would be setting precedence. Is the freshman class going to reflect up and coming MCs? Will they highlight artists with the most crossover potential? What's the right balance to strike between mainstream appeal and underground traction? These questions and more were being answered on the fly. After all, there really is a first time for everything. We see the establishment of the one lyricist minimum anointing Lupe as hip hop's savior during the game's darkest hour. You can't tell the story of the South from the late 2000s to mid 2010s without mentioning Boosie implies. While choices like Young Dro and Rich Boy make more sense at the time when you add context into the equation. Unfortunately, we also get the first instances of freshmen slipping through the cracks. Picking artists from different regions, backgrounds, and age ranges poses significant challenges. You're bound to miss. It's a numbers game. But even for the time period we're looking at, sitting Crooked Eye, Joel Ortiz, Lupe, and Saigon in a room together gave the grouping more of an identity crisis rather than a assurances that they'd be the next breakout stars. Number 9 2020. Starting off the decade strong, XXL's 2020 class is on pace to be one of their more promising in nearly a decade. Baby Keem, Lotto, Polo G, Fabio Foreign, and Jack Harlow is an all-star starting five for sure. With Rod Wave coming off the bench, we know hit making won't be a problem. Sounding like a broken record at this point, it feels like the lows always contrast the highs. Cowboy and 24K Golden might have gotten five of their 15 minutes of fame before disappearing from the scene. We rarely hear anything from Lil TJ these days, and Chica, well, while Chica still hasn't hit that next gear we know she's capable of. Overall, this class does cover its bases with passing grades and creativity, hit making, and delivery. I guess now we're just waiting to see what kind of longevity artists like Polo, Fabio, Harlow, and Rod Wave experience before determining if number nine is a good enough placement for this group. It also should be noted that Pop Smoke was the first freshman selected for this class. Unfortunately, he didn't live long enough to make it to the photo shoot. Rest in peace, King. Let us know down in the comments, is there an ideal ratio when picking a double XL? class. Obviously, cashing out on Keem would outweigh a whiff like Cowboy, but how many misses can you have before the whole class is labeled a bust? Personally, once I ask who a third time, you lost me, but I digress. Number 8, 2017. Not only does 2017 find itself in the middle of our rankings, the freshmen find themselves in the middle of our spectrum of success. When retroactively ranking these lists, we can comfortably state that no class had more pressure on them than 2012. 2009 saw the discovery of Wale and Kid Cudi, 2010 gave us Cold and Big Sean, then 2011 we get K-Dot and Meek Mill. We say retroactively because it took time for these artists to develop into the stars they would become. But if we're talking immediate reception and expectations, no class had to scale a 
higher peak than 2017. XXX Tentacion and Playboy Cardi were surefire bets that paid off, both over exceeding commercial expectations several times over. Amine and A Boogie have fan bases that predictably catapult new music into the top section of your favorite DSP. We had a couple of gradual fall offs, rest in power to PNB, but made in Tokyo, Kyle, and Cap G also belong in that conversation. Then we have whatever happened with Ugly God. Hindsight aside, he had all the red flags of a gimmicky rapper back when he was selected. This isn't a bad ranking, although whether you're examining proficiency on the mic or the ability to sell out arenas, this class feels oddly top heavy. Number seven. 2009. So we've already discussed 07 and the hurdles everyone cleared just to break ground for future classes. We still don't know why, but XXL didn't roll out a list in 2008 at all, making 09 the first group to enjoy sustained success across the board. If you're unfamiliar with Wale's game, your cookouts probably didn't have any line dances or twerk sessions, but we'll play along. Mr. Falarin himself really put the DMV on the map. No, not the place where you get your license. B.O.B. had a solid two album run before he started playing the government is out to get me route. We'll never downplay what it means to be a critical thinker, but more often than not, people step outside the conventional train of thought and get drunk off their own Kool-Aid. Ace Hood also proved that he can carry several mixtape series and even put out quality work without the We The Best label behind him. He's still trying to live down that Roly incident though. Then we have the kings of cult followings, Currency and Kid Cudi. If staying in your lane was a person, it would be Spitter Andretti. And Cudi just had his own movie on Netflix not too long ago. Depending on when you see this ranking, that might not even be a metric for success. Let's just say 09 got the ball running on what would be quite a historic run. Number 6, 2019. Falling about one self-inflicted collapse shy of the top 5, 2019 was a bounce back year for the ages. Megan and the baby were hybrids of what the industry will become, MCs who prioritize flow and delivery while flirting with pop appeal and crossover ability. They had great chemistry in the studio together as well, hence the self-inflicted collapse. If you know, you know. Rico Nasty and Tierra Wax showed the company's willingness to step outside the box and make bold predictions for sound and style moving forward. But the biggest surprise in this class would be how right they were about Gunna and Roddy Rich. Gunna, even after the court proceedings, has proven to be a perennial talent. His style is unique, he's got a crazy ear for beats, and he minds his business. That's a winning formula. Despite dropping at the end of the decade, Please Excuse Me For Being Antisocial will be remembered as one of the defining albums of 2010's hip hop. So successful that even a global pandemic couldn't stop the album's run, just slow it down a bit. Roddy might be the biggest example of bittersweet success we've seen from the brand. Going double platinum out the gate doesn't leave artists with a lot of space to make mistakes. That makes the fall from the top so much more abrasive. And we don't even gotta get into YK, Blueface, or Lil Mosey either. Number 5, 2014. The year XXL decided to let us in on the audition process, the magazine went from hard knocks to American Idol. We're talking about interactiveness, not the difficulty or quality of the show, by the way. How did y'all choose Jaron Bitten over Lil Herb? You heard us right, his first bid preceded the name change. How'd John Connor get greenlit over Vince Staples and Rhapsody? This is no shade to the artists we're naming, just highlighting the contradictions in the process. Even accounting for the new format and picks that didn't escape the game's gravity, this is one of the five most balanced classes they put out yet. Chance was definitely shaping up to be the genre's next superstar until he hit a pothole of his own. Despite that, we still have faith that his talent and recent output has him geared up for a revenge tour. Isaiah was a phenomenal pick, although already being signed to TDE made his inclusion a no-brainer. This class's biggest strength lies in their supporting cast. Dirk had seen on and off success for years before gaining mainstream traction in 2020. This year saw the addition of R&B to the list, with August Alsina and Ty Dolla being the first to grace the cover. Ty Dolla spent the better part of the decade being music's most versatile skeleton key. He could give you features and he could give you hits. We can't forget Kevin Gates, Rich Homie, or August Alsina. And maybe one of the biggest what ifs, Troy Av. Whew, we don't even want to talk about that. Number 4, 2013. Boiling these rankings down to the playlist you can make from them would make this one of our most contentious lists yet. Even off the merits of their talent and longevity, 2013 throws its name into discussion for best freshman class without any objections from us. When comparing it to the three medalists ahead of it, fourth place still finds itself among highly celebrated company. Travis, Schoolboy, and Joey could contend for this spot by themselves. Additions like Absol, Logic, and Chief Keef just strengthen the buffer between them and their preceding competition. This class is also the closest you'll get
get to an XXL cheat code. They included Sosa as the 10th man knowing he wasn't even present for the photo shoot, let alone the freestyles or ciphers. In Keith's defense, he was serving a brief stint in jail at the time. If he wasn't already buzzing from songs like I Don't Like and Love Sosa, who knows if he would have gotten that invite or not. Circling back to those self-inflicted collapses we spoke on earlier, perhaps no artist has done more to tarnish their own legacy than Logic. We also got absurdly short returns on Angel Hayes, Kirk Bangs, and Trinidad James. Too versatile to fall any lower, not impactful enough to climb any higher, 2013's XXL class ages as well as you'd expect from a time that saw thrift shop and started from the bottom dominating the charts in the same year. Number 3, 2011. Yo, we probably blew somebody's parlay giving this class the bronze, but you have to keep in mind. As crazy as it is that Kendrick, Meek, and Mac Miller were selected in the same class, Lil Twist was co-signed by the same artist that ushered in Drake, Nicki, and Tiger in a superstardom. Wait, was Tiger a superstar? Okay, that might be a stretch, but you get the point. We asked earlier about the ratio between hits and misses really to gauge where this class would land. Also, to pose an interesting question, if the public isn't ready for a pick, does that inherently make it a bad one? Crit is the most talented MC to come out of this draft class, yet even 13 years later, he still has an argument for the most underrated in the game. Someone has to be at fault, right? That starting five might be the most impressive on this list, but where is Yellow Wolf at in 2024? Is Diggy on the same island as Russell? Sci High was probably an optimistic pick even back in 2011. Although, we do need that E-Guide album, bro. Point is, even a class as prominent as Kendrick's can be weighed down by a pick like Lil B. Yo, don't curse us, bro. Just keep it in the stack. Really, to outperform a class like this, you would either need proficiency or depth. Qualities that the next two classes have in droves. Number two, 2016. To many younger viewers, 2016 is the holy grail of XXL classes. By far their most viewed cipher, the most sustained average career span, as well as the best split between talent and ambition. If we're judging the selections on a case by case basis, nothing is top in 2016. The reason we have it as a runner up isn't because we doubt the freshmen selected. Rather, we acknowledge that the ceiling of this class fails to meet the critical or commercial peak we have yet to cover. Still, if your ranking is reversed, we wouldn't be mad at it. One thing that doesn't get talked about enough, the complimentary nature of these artists. It's a tough balance to cultivate. If you're too homogeneous, then the class itself feels starved of creativity and versatility. But if you're too dispersed, then the question becomes, who on this cover is going to get left out? By finding a better blend than any class in XXL history, 2016's freshmen managed to juggle overlapping fan bases while still being unique enough to expand. Artists like Uzi, Yachty, Kodak, and 21 are all branded with that SoundCloud label. Not only did they shed the generational pejorative, they did so by developing their own style. Number one, 2010. And this is what we call proficiency. You get J. Cole and Big Sean, two artists that cemented their presence in the top five discussions throughout the decade. We got Travis Scott before Travis Scott, aka Mr. Taylor Gang himself. J. Rock's breakthrough would signal the rise of the Black Hippie Collective, while a few neighborhoods over Nipsey would get his first real shot at bringing all money into the mainstream. Even with all that talent, we haven't mentioned this class as X Factor. OJ the Juice Man. Okay, nah, but seriously, Gangsta Gibbs' career path might have overcome the most uphill battle in the publication's history. Signed to Interscope back in 2006, the Gary Animal recorded a whole debut that never saw the light of day. We don't know what resources or crystal balls were used, but someone in the XXL boardroom had the foresight to put Gibbs on the cover. He gets signed to Jeezy's CTE World in 2011 and lives happily ever after. <laughs> okay, nah, but for real. After several highly acclaimed mixtapes, Freddie left Jeezy's label and branched out on his own. He would work with Mad Lib, blah, 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 help get Griselda off the ground, etc. Then we find ourselves in 2024 and Gibbs enjoyed more commercial success than ever before, working with Ye and Ty Dolla on Vultures 1. Moral of the story, XXL freshmen can experience breakthroughs more than a dozen years after appearing on the cover. It's not too late for Kid Ink to make a comeback. Coupling his talents with greats like Cole, Sean Don, Nip, and Wiz was low-key assembling the rap Avengers years before the film came out. Hey, what you over there talking to yourself for? This is the part of the video where you smack the like button and get your thoughts off down in the comments. Let us know which of the freshman classes was your favorite growing up. This your man Super Thanks, I mean CJ, signing out for CT, I'm out.